close to Masada, about a mile to the place where we think that Ron Wyatt said that uh, City of Gomorrah was, but was destroyed by fire and brimstone. This is such an amazing find. I can't believe we found it. Spotted it from the road. So uh, Shree and I are going back here. We're going exploring. And we're going to see if we can't find any evidence. So Monty and I decided we wanted to know more about this and came across Ron Wyatt. Now, Ron Wyatt discovered the ruined cities of Sodom and Gomorrah alongside the Dead Sea in Israel in about 1984-85. Researchers and archaeologists have since uncovered the ruins of man-made limestone buildings which have been showered in sulfuric balls. The Bible says that God rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah fire and brimstone from the heavens. The definition of brimstone means stones made out of sulfur. Modern excavation of uh, the Roman city of Pompeii found a layer of volcanic ash on the top of the limestone structures, but the original stone buildings um, were not also turned into ash. Let's read what Jehovah our Lord has to say. Then Lot chose all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and Abraham and Lot separated themselves one from another. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Now the angels came, and they hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters, which are here lest they be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And in Genesis 19.16 it says, And while he lingered, the men laid hold of his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him outside the city. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone, and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. But Lot's wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. That being the sauna, up there, uh, they go down a little ways and then they stop down there, but all that is ash. Uh, you can any of the white stuff. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, said the Lord, So shall no man abide there, neither shall any man dwell therein. And in Luke in the New Testament it tells us, But that same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Okay, we trek back here close to Masada, about a mile to the place where we think that Ron Wyatt said that the uh, city of Gomorrah was, but was destroyed by fire and brimstone. And uh, he found several, like 98% pure sulfur balls, and uh, they're not found anywhere else in the world. And some of these remains, he says that the city burn at a really high temperature. So uh, Shree and I are going back here. We're going exploring. We're going to see if we can't find any evidence that uh, this is the place that Ron White said tomorrow was. If we find sulfur balls, we'll know we're in the right spot. So we will see. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities outside them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God has left Sodom and Gomorrah as an example. 
I hope somebody out there or anybody that watches this is blessed along with us. We aren't professional movie makers. We aren't professional archaeologists. We don't even pretend to be amateur archaeologists. This was the first time I've done anything like this. Well, I take that back. We did look for an ancient bridge in Italy. This was holding scripture in your hand, reading the words, saying, God said it. This is truth. By gosh, let's go find it. Let's let's prove that that this is more than just um, a book of analogies. These are this is a real history, and it's a real future that he's talking about. And it was amazing. I, I that's the only word I can use. This was such an amazing journey, an adventure. It was probably the most exciting thing besides the birth of my children and grandchildren I have ever done. It was really, really blessed. And I pray anybody listening to this is blessed along with us. So there's like gullies or roads going through the middle of all this. There's one going off of this side. We hadn't followed that anywhere yet. All of these flat top things, they've got some kind of crazy thing here. roads or the access ways or whatever you want to call them go off each side right here across from each other and uh don't know what's up in there oh this this goes on for really really long ways get over here and see Like I said, if we find sulfur balls here, we'll know we came to the right spot. The biblical narrative of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other three cities of the plain has been proved accurate. The ancient biblical cities have been accounted for and all suffered the same fate. And yet they are 30, sometimes 50 kilometers apart. Were they were all destroyed by fire and brimstone, just as the Bible said. This evidence serves as a warning to all of mankind not to live like the evil men of Sodom and Gomorrah. The ruined cities of Sodom and Gomorrah continue to lay in ash as a clear warning to all who would practice the wicked deeds of the Sodomites. Now, it tells us in 2 Peter that it's, it would be left there as a witness for us. And I just find that amazing because these ruins are 4,000 years old. It is just literally amazing. But it doesn't rain in that area very much. I think their yearly rain is something like 2 inches. It is just literally amazing. They've tested the, uh, the soil composition or whatever from these walls and it, uh, in a laboratory, and they said it was definitely ash. I picked up some of the stuff, and it just crumbles in your hand. The only reason all this stuff is still here is because it doesn't rain. Uh, I'll pick up some here in a little bit and show you how crazy it is. It looks like we're getting toward the center of stuff here. And it's directly 
um, in front of uh, the Dead Sea, which is blowing a, a constant salt breeze onto the surface of this, which makes it a little bit hard at first. Um, you can see my husband will put his hand through it and, and it crunches easily, but it kind of puts a coating on it. So if rain does come, or two inches of rain comes, it wouldn't do much damage. It was uh, the perfect place to leave a sign for his people. Archaeologists um, now say that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is in the Jordan side of the Dead Sea. But they have not found any of the things that we are talking about and going to show you here okay, today. Okay, I just dug some a couple of sulfur balls out of the wall back there. I just wanted to show you what kind of what kind of stuff this is. It just the whole thing just you know nothing but ash. Dry, crumbly ash. They have not found the Ashen City. They haven't found the 98% sulfur balls embedded, impaled in the walls of this city by the thousands, by the millions. They haven't found a, a, all the descriptions that are given for a Canaanite city of that age are still standing there. Now, the structures that people lived in that were attached to the walls or around the walls those are ash heaps and you can see them piled up here close to the wall um, but the wall itself and hints of the other structures are still there and i believe we can see pretty well the remains of a ziggurat at the center of the city The location of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the other three cities of the plain are well known from the time of Moses, even unto the first century of the apostles of Jesus. The mountain you see in the far distance, uh, I'll zoom in there, that is Masada. Uh, I don't think we're going to go up there, but that's Masada, and that's how close this place is to Masada. I wish they would have told us that on a few of the videos where these people walked back up in here and uh, found these sulfur balls and all these ruins. Uh, it would have helped us a lot in our uh, in our quest, but we did. It's the first hike we took, so we didn't uh, we didn't really waste any time. So it's not like we we hiked all over Israel. It's a pretty amazing place, so Sheree's working her way back. I had to, I had to halt her. She would have kept going. <laughs> We'd have had to camp out here at night. You found it, Sheree. Uh -huh. You found it. Yes, Wait till you see this big old glob of yellow stuff on this rock from this uh, sulfur ball I burnt. Honey, I, I was going to just burn it for a little bit for the camera and then put it out. I couldn't put it out. Oh, you can't put it out. Uh, yeah. Yourself. Exactly. The whole land is brimstone, salt, and burning. It is not sown, it does not bear, nor does any grass grow there. Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, these are all the cities that were destroyed. Deuteronomy 9.23 Now, let's learn about what the ancient Canaanite cities might have been like. An ancient city was protected by a ring of walls, or casement walls. These were made of two parallel walls, the outer one thicker uh, than the inner, and at times taller, connected by a series of cross walls about 1.5 or 2 meters long. 
uh, which gave the whole system the appearance of uh, having rooms. It had a rampart most of the time leading up to the city gates. Inside the walls were houses of varying sizes and shapes, but also monumental buildings, which um, covered a substantial part of the walled area, that inner wall. Among these were um, a temple, uh, possibly a palace, often at the center of the uh, settlement or in a prominent position these buildings would be placed. All houses were accessible via narrow alleys. Until the beginning of the first millennium BC, the city-states were independent of each other. Okay, so we're back at the entrance. And that thing up there, we think, is a sphinx that marked this city. They had them throughout, but not much of it's left. This is so amazing that we actually found the city. Until the beginning of the first millennium BC, the city states were independent of each other. Uh, we can judge from the amount of attention uh, they lavished on their walls and the fortification of those walls. Um, they were often warring with each other. The layout of the walled cities um, of the period is repeated in many instances. Inside and a little distance from the wall was a ring of roads with houses, a gap between them uh, the wall and them would be used for storage. Within this frame, the center of the city followed no uh, discernible plan, but was closely built maze of cramped alleys and dwellings. This is exactly what we saw when we went on our adventure. When we spotted it from the road, it just looked like white ash. It looked very out of place. So we decided to go and see. Well, it was about a mile and a half. We walked. And as we got closer and closer, this is what we saw was this walled city with an inner ring. Now it's very, um, it's 4,000 years old, so it's very deteriorated. But you can tell some of the things that were there. Uh, a double wall enclosed the city. Um, with a center ring with what looked to me like the remains of a ziggurat there in the center and or a temple of some sort. All roads uh, visible to us were coming directly off that round center ring. I just have to say it was such a blessing to find this, to seek it out, to research it, to get excited about going out in, in the world and, and proving what I already knew to be true. This didn't increase my faith, but it sure gave me more ammunition to help those who don't know the Lord. I'm just amazed as I stood there. I can't even get across to you how enormous these walls are. They're so tall. At places 50 foot, at other places I know at least 100 foot. And I think it's so interesting that the people in that time contoured their walls and their cities to the terrain. They didn't move the terrain or flatten the terrain. They went with the curve and just leveled their floors inside. It's, um, it's beautiful, it's exciting, and most of all, I feel blessed to have even been a part of something this wonderful. I hope in us sharing this that y'all are blessed too. The chalk-like ash found in the ruined city of the Dead Sea does not occur in other parts of the country. What could have caused such an intense heat to turn these cities into ash? The Bible 
has the only logical answer. The swirling designs on the sides of the structures provide evidence that these buildings uh, were turning into ash by a process called thermal ionization. Sulfuric balls can easily be dug out of the surface rubble of the ruined city of Gomorrah. Ron Wyatt and other people after him have had their sulfuric balls tested uh, at labs and it is revealed that the sulfuric balls are about 98% pure sulfur with measurable amounts of magnesium. Researchers were astonished at these results because all sulfur found throughout the world is usually no more than 40%. There is no other location on the planet where sulfur can be found in such a pure form, 98% pure. The white ash that was tested from the ruined city of Gomorrah proves that the ash was formed by extremely hot sulfuric balls burning the limestone rock of the city to form calcium sulfate. Since calcium sulfate is not found by burning wood or any other flammable material, but only by high concentrations of sulfur mixed with limestone rock, can we conclude that these ancient cities were destroyed just as the Bible says. Okay, these are the Two sulfur balls. Well, I think they're sulfur balls that we uh that I dug out of the wall. I'm going to uh, put a little fire on the little one. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, this is what they were talking about. So, uh, whoa! What well, turned yellow? Oh, look at it burning! Look at it! I'll be dying! Look at that! That's it! I'll be doing. I'm a goodness gracious. That's burning like crazy. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> yeah, that's sulfur. <coughs> oh my god, look at that. It's like it's melting. It's still burning. I can't blow it out. I wanted to save it. Goodness gracious. That is crazy. Look at that. I can't blow it out. The only way I could stop it, I guess, is to smother it. Boy, that stinks to high heaven just like sulfur. That's unreal, y'all. Shree and I found it. We sure enough found it. <coughs> and you find these, these sulfur balls embedded in the walls and some places on the floor. And they're like encapsulated. It's like uh, they, they burnt themselves a hole into the ground. But this thing is still burning. This is like crazy. We're going to have to definitely post some of this stuff to YouTube because uh, it was well worth walking out here and trying to find this. Man. Is this not crazy? Whew. Okay, we'll post a little bit more later. I, I got to get away from this thing. It's a... Uh, it's, it's, that's pretty much a gag in it. All five cities of the plain have been discovered, including Sodom and Gomorrah. So remember, your Bible is true, it's accurate, and it is the word of Jehovah God.